Ciao friends! In this unplugged video I will show you the obfuscation feature for DAX optimizer, which is a feature for uh, the VPAX files that can be used to transfer a VPAX file in a completely obfuscated way. This could be interesting if you want to preserve sensitive data that you could have in the metadata of the VPAX file. The VPAX file doesn't have any data of your model, but still has name of tables, name of columns. If you, if you want to hide those names, uh, you can now obfuscate them. Let's start with the demo. So the obfuscation we implemented in DAX Optimizer is uh, available through a library, the VPAX Obfuscator, that has been recently released as a free open source project. Now, this library can be implemented and will be implemented in tools like Bravo for Power BI, DAX Studio, and Tabular Editor. But now I'm going to show you how to use the obfuscated library using the command line tool, which is already available. So if you want to try to use DAX Optimizer with the obfuscated files, it's already available for you, and I'm going to show you how this works. So assuming you already know how DAX Optimizer works, and if you don't, please look at the previous unplugged video where I described the entire process of using DAX Optimizer. So in this case, we start uh, having already a VPAX file, here we go, which is uh, the file that describes the content of our model. This file only contains metadata, uh, the name of the tables, the DAX expressions, no data at all. But again, this data is sent to the cloud, uh, to DAX Optimizer service that has to process the statistical information and return the suggestions for uh, improving the performance of your DAX code. Now, the obfuscation is a process where we replace all these names with random names, so that in any case, if someone gets access to the file on the cloud, it will not have access to any of the sensitive information, even just the comments in your code uh, that you might have and you don't want to disclose. Now, in reality, the service is safe. Nobody should access the service, but imagine that someone uh, stole your, your user credential and get access to the service through your credential, so we can obfuscate the file also to uh, avoid that uh, the data could be obtained by someone else. So the process is the following. So in order to obfuscate this file, we need a tool, which is this vpaxobfuscator.exe file that you will uh, find in the, in the link. You can download from the link that you will see in the video. Now, this uh, executable is basically a common line tool. So if I run this code, I can see the help. And uh, the command that I want to use is the obfuscate command. The obfuscate command gets a vpax file and generates another vpax file, which is the obfuscated version, plus a dictionary that contains the translation between the original names and the obfuscated names. This dictionary uh, is like the key to decode the file, and you have to keep this key, this file, this dictionary file, on your machine in a safe place, because uh, through this file you will be able to decode and to understand what is uh, the result of an analysis. So, in order to obtain the dictionary, we have to run the obfuscate command saying, I want to get the VPAX file, for example, let's say I have here the Contoso 1M VPAX, which is the file that I, let's say, is the first version of the file that I send, I want to send to DAX Optimizer. Uh, I provide an output name, uh, sorry, double dash and double dash output uh, VPAX. And I call this Contoso 1M obfuscated dot VPAX. And it's also mandatory to include another output file, which is the dictionary, that I can name with the same name, so Contoso 1M obfuscated dot dictionary, which uh, is uh, the file that I want to get as an output. So these are the mandatory uh, arguments. You can specify also the track, uh, sorry, the allow overwrite if you want to overwrite an existing VPAX, uh, obfuscated VPAX file and dictionary, and track an obfuscated, which is a special parameter, which uh, allows to keep track of those uh, names uh, that could have been uh, 
not obfuscated because there are few reserved names like date, the value. Uh, there is a list of 20 names that are also function names that could be, uh, should not be obfuscated in case they are name of tables. There are no restrictions for the column, just for the table. So that's another option we have. Usually we don't have to worry too much about that, but let's move forward. So now that I execute this command, you see that we have uh, the file that I created this file dictionary, this one, and at this point I don't have to send to the cloud the obfuscated file, I have to send to the cloud just uh, the vpax file. Now I already prepared this, I already sent the vpax file obfuscated and I already uh, executed the analysis. As you see in uh, the browser window, when you have a model that has been obfuscated, you have this tag obfuscated that says this model has been obfuscated. I already have an analysis here that shows that the list of the issues, but for each issue I see that the measure name is something that is not easy to understand, and when I look at the code of each measure, you see that the measure, the table names, the column names, the measure names have been replaced with strange names. Now these strange names are actually in the dictionary file. So if I open Visual Studio Code, so let's open Visual Studio Code one second, I think I have the ability to, so let's close this one, to see what uh, what is the content of a dictionary. And for example, you see that the dictionary has uh, the original value and the obfuscated value. So the way this string is obtained is absolutely, I would say, random. If I execute the same uh, obfuscation twice, I will get different names. For this reason, it's extremely important to keep the dictionary that we created because otherwise we have no idea. We are not able to reverse engineer or to uh, apply an algorithm to retrieve the original names. And in order to make sure that people are, uh, I mean, can rely on this uh, statement, the code for this library, the obfuscator library, is uh, free and open source. And you could also implement your own algorithm to create the obfuscated values because Dax Optimizer will work the same. Dax Optimizer doesn't care about the specific translation. The important thing is that you have to keep a syntax that is syntactically valid in DAX, but because otherwise the, the, the measure will not be long will no longer be valid and will not be accepted and analyzed correctly. Now the problem is okay, now we have this uh, uh, so the, the, the only file I sent to the engine is the obfuscated file. How can I use this content? Well, when I click on this button, I can deobfuscate the VPAC file which means that just in the browser, without sending, without any communication with the server, I can provide a dictionary, and the dictionary is uh, decoded within the browser. Now, this experience will be available also offline once we release a specific client for uh, this uh, scope, because actually we don't have, a, uh, we, we could remove the internet connection in a way to, to make sure that this is uh, actually working but at the moment it's just implemented in the browser version. So the local version will come, but if you monitor the traffic on the network, you will see that there is no communication with the server and everything happens locally to your browser. So now um, I, I just prepared this in advance, so I'm gonna use this dictionary file that I prepared before, and I drag and drop this file here, and I click on the obfuscate. At this point, all the names are visible, all the measures are visible, and remember this deobfuscation, which is just a replacement of the obfuscated names with the original names, happen in the, on the browser. If I close the browser and, and I open it again, I will have to deobfuscate again unless I decide to store the, um, uh, the dictionary in the local cache of the browser, which is still local, still in my, on my machine and is not sent to the server, but at least I will not have to click on the obfuscate every time. However, there is uh, one important consideration. What happens when I start my analysis of the model and st I start to fix measures, uh, or I start to ignore measures, and uh, all the actions that I apply when you click on fixed or ignored, for example, these actions are marked on this version of the file with the current uh, obfuscated names, because from the point of view of the service, the service doesn't know the original names. Now, if I create a version 2, which is the file that I have here, 
If I start the obfuscation with a new dictionary, the names will be different and the engine will not be able, the service will not be able to reconcile the old names with the new names. So what we can do is what we call an incremental obfuscation. When we have a version 2 of the VPAX file for the same model, we should use the previous dictionary as a, as a starting point for the new dictionary. This way, all the existing names are still the same and the new dictionary will have all the previous names plus new names that you could, you could have added to the model. This way, we keep the continuity between the versions and the names, the, let's say, the obfuscated names continue to be the same and the fingerprint of the measures is the same, so we can keep track of the versions. Of course, which this means that when I want to uh, use the obfuscator again, let's say that I want to obfuscate now the version 2, so let's say v2, I will add here a parameter, which uh, now I don't remember, so let me, uh, this is the unplugged, so nothing cut, everything is live. So I have to look at the obfuscate uh, arguments and, oh, dictionary. Dictionary is the keyword where that I can use to provide a previous dictionary. So let me restore here. So I, I want to get, let's start with minus minus dictionary. And I want to provide a dictionary file, which is the uh, Contoso dictionary file. Okay, I have to write everything again. So out, so the, oh, let's do this. We can do this. I, I can add that at the end, so it doesn't matter the, the position. So I can say I want to uh, use, oh, this is the, the one that I prepared before. Okay, this, this, is, this should be the right one. So I want to get a dictionary for Contoso 1M, which is the previous dictionary. I want to analyze the version 2 of the VPAX file. So I have a second version that has a, a few changes applied. Then I want to generate a new file that is the obfuscated version 2 of the VPAX file and I want to get in the result the dictionary for this uh, second file. So if I execute this code, what I get at this point is a, a new version of the um, file and a new version of the dictionary. So if I look at the dictionary now, so you see that, oh, I don't see, oh, here we go. Uh, you see that in this area we have the, the version two, in this area we have the version one. You see that the value and the obfuscated values for version one and version two are the same but the version 1 could have additional names that only exist in the version 2 because you added measures or you changed something in the comments, for example. Also, the comments are um, subject to the obfuscation, of course. So at this point, I can upload to uh, Dax Optimizer the second version. So now I move the version 2 obfuscated. So I get the version 2 obfuscated and I move this here and I start my analysis and in a few seconds I should have uh, my uh, process uh, ready. So as soon as we have the, the file ready and uh, uh, processed and uh, we run the analysis, we will see the result uh, of the second version of the obfuscated file. Here we go. Now we have the model that is obfuscated again. I can uh, get the new dictionary to deobfuscate the model again. And at this point, I can uh, look at the issues and I can see that the measures are now visible because otherwise they would have been obfuscated. What is important is that if I go back to the version one and I uh, look at the result, because the dictionary that I use now is uh, consistent and compatible with the previous version, I can still see also the version one data. So the dictionary is only one for the model, not for the version. And ideally, I always load the latest version of the dictionary into the browser so that I have the latest version of the uh, deobfuscation dictionary that I need to work with my suggestions. So we have seen that the obfuscation feature in uh, DAX Optimizer allows a maximum privacy for the data that are stored uh, on the cloud. The deobfuscation happens only on the client, now in the browser, in the future also in other local application, but you can analyze the traffic that happens in the network. You will see that nothing is exchanged, is exchanged with the server 
everything happens locally. And so this is another feature that improves the security and the privacy of your data if you want to use DAX Optimizer. As usual, enjoy DAX! Mm -hmm.